So the last topic we're going to look at under our overview in chapter one is regulations that pertain to integrated solid waste management systems. So in Ontario, it's really the provincial level that contains all the important regulations. Certainly at the local level, the zoning bylaws would be important to siting waste facilities. At the federal level, there's some um, kind of federal policy level things that help influence what regulations happen in the province, but it's really the province that has the jurisdiction to do most of the regulation around waste. Um, so in Ontario, there's three big ones um, that we'll just talk about briefly here. And the granddaddy of them is the Environmental Protection Act. Um, as environmental engineers or in people interested in environmental engineering, um, this is definitely something you've seen before. Um, one of the most important things the Environmental Protection Act does is establishes the ability of the Minister of Environment, Conservation and Parks to use environmental compliance approvals, ECAs, to govern specific sites. So this isn't just for waste sites, it's for all kinds of sites, but all waste sites will have ECAs as well. So the ECA is just a little piece of law that applies to just one site. Um, and it's based on what the site itself has decided is going to be safe for it to operate um, with respect to the environment. So it's going to include its own um, design and operations plans, drawings, specifications. And once the ministry reviews and approves it, then it's codified in the ECA and they, ha they have to follow their own rules for operating their own site. Um, and ECAs are everywhere. So just for an example, this is a, a database that the ministry maintains that shows all the ECAs um, that have been approved recently, at least. Um, and this is Waterloo, and you can just see um, there's everywhere. All kinds of uh, different businesses have ECAs. Um, so you might have even dealt with them before. Another important thing the Environmental Protection Act um, includes for waste is a few regulations that are directly important to different types of waste operations. So one of them is um, the landfills regulation, Ontario Regulation 232-98. Um, we're going to talk about this more when we get into landfills, but this basically prescribes um, what is an acceptable way to run a landfill in Ontario. Um, there's another regulation that prescribes what municipalities need to provide recycling uh, and yard waste system, that's OREG 10194, and that also prescribes what's acceptable compost uh, made from yard waste that you can put back on the land. Uh, on the blueback side, this regulation is kind of being supplanted with the Resource Recovery and Circular Economy Act. Uh, I will talk about that in just a moment. Um, some other important regulations under the EPA, uh, where 10194 covers municipal responsibilities for diversion programs. There's uh, a suite of other regulations that govern um, the ICNI, in industrial, institutional, and commercial sector. Um, and it's kind of interesting in Ontario, there's two kind of separate waste systems. One is operated by the municipalities for residences and some small businesses. Um, and then one is kind of for everyone else. And the municipal programs uh, have way better diversion and they've had way more energy put towards them. And the ISDI programs, it's more waste total and much poorer diversion. So addressing ICI waste is going to be really important to shifting our waste system to something more sustainable. Um, the second regulation we can talk about briefly is the Environmental Assessment Act. Um, so you've probably dealt with environmental assessments before as well. Um, these are required on pro uh, projects that are of a sufficient size and scale to have large impacts on the environment. This does happen with some waste projects like very large landfills. Um, often people will avoid trying to do environmental assessments just because they're quite intensive and there's risk that things won't get improved. Um, so you don't see them that often, but certainly large projects will be required to pass the environmental environmental assessment process. And then the last one we'll talk about briefly is the Resource Recovery and Circular Economy Act, the RCEA. This is a new piece of legislation um, and this legislation follows with the policy direction set in the Waste-Free Ontario um, plan uh, to establish extended producer responsibility programs to replace um, all the old diversion programs that we're running in Ontario. So uh, batteries, tires 
and electronic waste is now all managed under regulations under the Resource Recovery and Circular Economy Act. And our blue box waste is moving under this act as well. So uh, kind of crossover with um, OREG 10194 under the Environmental Protection Act, we're getting a whole new system um, under extended producer responsibility under the RRCEA. Um, this is a really, really big change in the uh, regulatory environment in Ontario. We're going to talk about this um, separately in the next chapter uh, because it's such a big topic on its own. But just as an overview, uh, these are some of the big regulations to pay attention to. And as we go through each topic, we'll talk about how each of these applies.